best player on defense, the most vocal clearly on the field, yes, isn't always the best leader in the locker room, but I would like to see Jalen transition into that role well, he's for this mature team. for that one. Yeah, he's so, not mature enough for that. Well, and Calais is towards the end of his career right. at this point, Telvin year five, so he certainly is going to have a, a while, we hope, uh, and expect. But I, I would like to see Jalen transition mm -hmm. into a, a, a vocal leader of the team because he is clearly the guy that everybody in the news is talking about, everybody in the locker room looks up to him at least on the field play. So I, I would like to see him transition into that. But I'm not, I don't think it's a slight. You disagree, Blythe? Yeah, de definitely. I, I don't, I just don't think uh, the the best player on the team necessarily has to be the greatest uh, PR guy. And and to me, like the, with the captains, you're really, your your pri I looked this up earlier, your primary responsibility is handling the, the coin toss and handling uh, the, what do you want to do as far as if a penalty is being called. And there's certain teams that they name weekly captains. They don't name year-long captains, the Falcons, the Ravens, the Bengals, the Lions, the Packers, Texans, and 49ers all name weekly captains. Colts and Rams don't even offer team captain status, and the Patriots and the Steelers don't even use the customary C. So I think this is a little, it's a little much ado about nothing. And Brady's, Brady's rarely a captain. In his 18 years, rarely has been a captain. Yeah, and I think well, that it, speaks the, to the vocal leadership. You know, Brady's certainly about the best of his possible game, but if that part doesn't surprise me kind of with his personality. And most likely the, the quarterback is going to be named as a captain on the team. And I thought that was huge news for, for Bortles as far as the growth of his game to see him take on that, that captain role. But there's not, a, there's not a captain named that I would, I would take this away from in order to give it to mm -hmm. Jalen. Jalen's leadership and his motivation speaks for his play on the field. And I think you've heard other guys, you've heard other, pl other players talk about this, that when, when Jalen missed those first, you know, I think he missed the OTAs. And when he finally came back, he brought that extra swing swagger on the team. So whether or not he's named as a you know a team captain, I think is neither here nor there. All right, when it comes to the Jaguars versus the Giants, Jalen, of course, will be going up against Odell Beckham Jr. as well, A.J. Boye, and, uh, and Sterling Shepard as well for the Giants. Lauren, we're going to talk to offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett a little later in the show, but what would you say is the matchup you are most excited to see? Oh, I think it's obvious, right? It's <laughs> Batman versus Joker, so I'm told. I can't see that on Twitter because <laughs> I was locked. Um, but no, I mean, that's what we're all here to see, right? We're here to see uh, the matchup between the highest paid receiver and the malviest D-back in the league and, and see who comes out on top. That's what I personally want to see. I hope they mic them up. Wouldn't that be something? They won't, but that would be I hope they might come up. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think that's the matchup to be seen. Now, uh, how many – listen, the highest paid receiver better get a bunch of targets in the game, I would assume, but you also know that you're going up against the top quarterback in the in the league. So, um, I, I don't know. That That is the most intriguing. I'm also, though, really looking – I'm really looking forward to seeing what – Regular season Blake looks like. I know I harp on him a lot, and I will continue to do so until I'm proven otherwise. But like I said, I, I have all I have to look at is preseason games, and meh, he didn't have a very good preseason showing. And I've, and I've been told, that don't you can't base it off that. Just wait, just wait. And there'll be some good Blake, and there'll be some bad Blake. And I'd like to see four quarters of Blake. I want to see the uh, him in his entirety. And there's good, bad, and ugly to see if he does make mistakes, if he's able to come back from that, and if he. Um, if he finds himself in a position where they've got to play catch up, they're playing from behind, is he the guy who's going to take that True. leadership C on his chest, if you will, and lead them uh, downfield? Because I think there's a lot of people that still question whether he is capable of bringing this team back from any kind of big deficit. He's never done it. Never done it in the history of his career. Donna? I'm actually looking forward to the matchup of our defensive line against Saquon Barkley. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to, because all the hype of, we know what Eli can do, kind of, you know, depends on the day, I guess. <laughs> um, Eli has no backup either, by the way, which it's, is all no, very interesting. It's, it's fascinating and fun. Um, but, no, I think uh, seeing what this defense can shut down and make this rookie look like is going to be fun.
That will be fun, Blythe. I would say I would have to co-sign with with Don. I mean, obviously, like OBJ versus Jalen. If they mic them up, that will be the mic up of the year already. Just game one of the season. But as far as like the game plan against the Giants, I was watching this uh, this Giants uh, film review guy. He 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 breaks down a lot of the the different film for for teams all over the NFL. But he focuses on the Giants, and he went through about a month ago and went through all of the Jaguars' offensive possessions last year, and he said that the if the Giants can beat the Jaguars on third down, if they can win on third down, especially in those large yardage opportunities and the low yardage opportunities with Saquon, then they have a really, really strong advantage as far as going up against that defensive line because that's where the, the, the Jaguars struggle is the long yardage completions on third down. Well, and what's going to be fun for me, this Giants offensive line is completely revamped, and they're going to be going up against who I think is the best defensive line. Donna, you can tell us, Nate Solder, does he have a whole lot left at left tackle? Because I tend to think that if the Patriots get rid of you, they're almost always getting rid of a player who's used up most of his juice. With the exception of, like, Chandler Jones. Yeah, and he's one of the only ones that comes to mind. Um, See, the problem with, with Nate was, he had a lot of personal issues, and it was because of his son that had cancer, and he went right. through it twice. So a lot of the a lot of the on the field lack of play was messed up in his head because of that. So if everything's right on that end, I think he has still maybe another two years, but he would get beat a lot towards last season. But again, his son had his cancer back, so you just yeah, you never know if it's. The home life, or if it is his game. Hmm. So. Sure. And then he'll be lining up next to left guard Will Hernandez, who I really liked coming out of the draft, left guard at UTEP for four years. And while that's great, he, he was a great guard there, mauling guard. The problem is he's a rookie, mm-hmm. and he's going up against, again, some of the best defensive line. And then the center actually played at Florida, John Jalapio. This is, I think, the first time he's ever made an NFL roster in the few years that he's graduated from college, so made the actual 53-man roster. So that's exciting for him, but again, obviously not necessarily the best in the league. And then right tack, or right guard Patrick Omame, we're all mm-hmm. very familiar with him. Uh, Lauren, he played for the Jaguars last year, and he was a good fill-in guard, but certainly not nearly as good as the Jaguars, who the Jaguars replaced him with, which is Andrew Norwell. And then it closes out with right tackle Eric Flowers, who's pretty good. But so that's the matchup I'm going to be watching because, of course, if Fournette can run the ball against the Giants, then you don't even need to see what Blake Bortles can no, do. that's right. Because and it's not just Fournette. I think Yeldon and Corey Grant have looked fantastic. I, I would agree. I would second that. I think they could be a three-headed monster if they want to be. I think if, if New York is able to stop the run, and this might sound extremely elementary, but if they're able to slow them down and, and prohib- or, uh, prevent – those guys from having any productivity, it's going to force Blake to maybe make some throws. And I think that's what they're hoping. They force Blake to make throws. He will throw inter- an interception or two. That's just kind of what he's shown in the past. Uh, that's when it becomes the Giants' advantage. So you got to hope that the Jags' offensive line on the same end is as, um, hopefully, as healthy as they have been in a while. Let's hope for that and that they are able, that we'll really get to see what they look like as well. So And that, I thought, was the best news that came out of the weekend, not just that Marquise Lee had the successful knee surgery last week, but that all 53 players on this roster, all active players, are practicing. Because for me, that was, there was only one question mark, and that was center Brandon Linder suffering that knee injury in week two of the preseason at the Vikings, and he hadn't practiced since. That was going, uh, I don't want this front five to not be together in that very first game because then obviously week two is going to be the Patriots. All how, right. many, how many times do you think they're going to show Tom Coughlin? Um, it depends on, I guess, is how he on the easy field? of a view. He won't be on the field. He'll be in a suite, mm-hmm. I would assume. And so if they can look at him with the camera angle, like right on him, then probably a lot during the it's broadcast. Gonna be... But I don't think they'll show him on the stadium <laughs> video boards whatsoever. I, th- I, I love it. I, I hope, you know, I hope they just annihilate them for his sake, too. Yeah. And <laughs> Marone was asked so about that fun. yesterday, too. Like, is it different, you know, Coughlin going back to the Giants? And of course, Marone in his. No, of course it's not. No, yes, no it is. business as usual. <laughs> yes, it sure. is. Sure. But we'll see. He certainly, <laughs> Tom Coughlin, more than most people, knows this Giants team really well. So he'll have this team prepared. Yeah, so look team. out for an Eli, just chuck it up. And That's all, all he does is chuck <laughs> up the ball. But the Jaguars are only a field goal favorite. That's ridiculous. But it's it in the NFL. It's always saying something if you're favored on the road. Yeah. Just because most yep. of the time the home team is favored. Yeah, so but la- but until last season, the Jaguars haven't been favored on the road since 2011. And even though they were favored on the road five times last season, they only won two of those games. Mm. All right. When we come back, college football. I was gonna say I, I 
didn't do actual betting, but in our Friday five pack, I did not do so well <laughs> no, you did in not. the betting. So right now, betting is a sore spot for me. Mentioning <laughs> odds, it just makes me uh, very frustrated at the moment. But when we come back, college football kicked off this past weekend. We are going to give you our thoughts. You're listening to Helmets and Heels, built by Dream Finders Homes on 10 to next up. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for you. <laughs> when I was listening this morning, I was like, oh, oh. It's terrible. And you're not going to be heard of picking in them or, or like playing like that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, next all. break, you have Dream Finders. Okay, thanks, JJ. How are you tonight? I'm good. Good. JJ, do you have the sound of the Nick Saban? Uh, yes. We do. Okay. Do you want to come back to that? Um, no, but if you want to have it ready, right. that'd be great, please. Here, Doug Peterson, too. Thank you. What Doug Peterson? Snapping at reporters. They're getting testy with reporters when they were asking about Nick Foles versus Carson Wentz. I'm like, what is with these coaches? With these wonderful quarterback situations situation that probably right. uh, many other teams would like to have. Take her. And they're getting real My mom's so mad. They're like, oh, we get to watch the Tiger Cup. Yes. That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his lookalike? Yeah. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah. But he looked, I mean, obviously a little bit younger version of Tiger. Right. But still, I'm like, holy cow, yeah, man. Like, him. I'm like, I hope you start getting paid for those appearances. <laughs> And autographs and stuff. I mean, you can do that. We'll hire you. Mm-hmm. Especially like in New York or Vegas, right? where they have impersonators yeah. all over the place. I heard that naked cowboy up in New York makes six figures. Does he really? Yeah, what? six figures. He's crazy. Where does he put his cash? <laughs> <laughs> Probably has like a bodyguard or something <laughs> for to pay him. That's crazy. All you know, Tom, about y'all's intro. I, I emailed Steve. That's weird. I, I just totally like forgot last week when we got we started going with the show, and I was like, oh, when I heard it tonight, like, oh yeah, that's right. I, I never have my earbuds in unless we need them. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. But thank you. Oh, New Void magazine dropped, and they used a really good photo. A really good photo. <laughs> no, I'm 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 being totally honest. Okay. Um, I wish I could. Uh, it's on Void Live's website. If you go to voidlive.com and click to read the issue online. It's the most recent issue, and it's a full like it's like a three page thread. Oh, Ashlyn wow. Sullivan has her interview in it, um, and then I interviewed former women who worked for the station. Mm. Um, Cool. There's a couple other local chicks that were in Alyssa Lang, who's now with the SEC Network, Jessica Blaylock. Oh, God, who else did I interview? Uh, Mackenzie Thurkill. I watched her yesterday on uh, Alyssa. Yeah, what's the name of that show? SEC Now. I'm thinking out loud. Yeah, that's what it's called. Oh, I'm like, I know the, like, T O L, but I'm like, I don't know what it stands for. But it's really good. They use like an action shot. It's four oh, of us cool. as like the big header photo. It's a good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't see it. Excuse me. I see the Breeze Mag online, but I don't. Yeah, click on that. Okay. Click on the. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, it'll be the first issue on like the shelf. Okay, just keep going. And then um, showed up and up a new tab. I was just confused because it said read past issues, but they have the new one under the past issues. Okay, got it. And then it's page I have 44. For the people to call hack it or do they call us? Hey, he's calling 674 okay. I was happy Johnny got. Uh, Named in the practice squad. Oh, Wolford? Yeah, yeah. I did see that. That's awesome. That's so exciting. Good for him. Me holding court. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> oh, the photo? You see it? Yeah. <laughs> Say it all together. <laughs> <laughs> 
in case you guys are watching on YouTube, I'll show you the Boyd Magazine issue. Go pick one up if you're locally in Jacksonville. And they will ship it to you, too. If... <sighs> Had enough, huh? Yeah. Had That's enough. That Is that the squeaky yeah. chair? No more squeaky. <laughs> Oh, okay. What did we learn? Oh, okay. I was sitting in here yesterday working at mm -hmm. the Jaguar show. Whose shirt is it? Whose shirt is it? By the way, that show yesterday, I don't know. Um, that show I had to work yesterday, oh. yeah. but Sally forgot that he had to do it. Oh, yeah, I heard that this morning. For like an hour and a half, he wasn't in it. So who all did it? Uh, they got like, so what happened? What, what did you have to do? They got like the crew, we're about to be there. <laughs> they got like sexton in the middle and acting. Which you and American Window Products on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Welcome back to Helmets and Heels, built by Dreamfinders Homes. Week one is in the books for college football. Let me make sure I end it with college football. Week one for the NFL is coming up. Um, it was an interesting week one, <laughs> to say the least, with uh, Gators winning. So you were happy, Lauren. Mm-hmm. Um, Brew ended up happy. Oklahoma yes, State did beat well. those Missouri, Missouri State Bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was happy. Marshall, Marshall came out with a win. Uh, nobody cares about Marshall but me, so that's <laughs> fine by me. Um, what, what is your uh, feel, What's your draw to Marshall? My brother. She loves Matt McConaughey. <laughs> Get in line, like then you should be a Texas fan. Which my brother went to Marshall, and he's a cop for them. Oh, okay, cool. And then um, there's, you know, quite a few former Pats that have gone. Gotcha. There as well. All right. Um, but the uh, the Alabama Louisville game didn't turn out too well. Yeah, it was a little, a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> a little, little bit, but the end or the halftime is or the end is what was the interesting part this and probably the most entertaining part of the game the from lovely, a global perspective. Yeah, the lovely uh, response that Nick Saban had from Maria Taylor. What answers did you have about your quarterbacks after watching both of them play tonight? Well, I still like both guys. I think both guys are good players. I think both guys can help our team. All right, so why do you continually try to get me to say something that doesn't respect one of them? I'm not going to, so quit asking. I hear you. Over 500 yards of total offense. What did you see from the entire unit then? Well, I, I thought we, when we executed and did what we were supposed to do, we played pretty well. Uh, so, obviously that's Nick Saban being Nick Saban is what everybody's saying. I don't understand in how he relates her asking a simple question of what did you get out of your quarterbacks into why are you trying to make me say something bad? Yeah. Don't you know that question is coming? But like you have to know. As, uh, you're Nick Saban. You have it, to know that question is coming. And nowhere of the question is, can you please tell me what didn't work for the quarterback? Right. Yeah. Or which one are you starting next week? She's right. not act, asking questions like that. Right. But kudos she to her. I it like a gangster, by Yes. The way. She's like, I hear you. I like, hear brush you right. off. Yeah. Oh, I'm still going to get my other questions in <laughs> is what I really like. I liked. sort of look at it from a different angle. I think that he is... Putting all the, I don't, it's not pressure, but putting all of the media attention on himself instead of on Jalen Hurts. And he's sort of sticking up for these kids, which I think is awesome. He comes across as a jerk, obviously. <laughs> but what he's actually doing is taking the attention away from these 18, 19 year old kids. And I think that's pretty cool. You don't think it, it, part of it's like protecting himself exactly. too? No, I think he's protecting from, the kids. From Jalen transferring? No, right? I don't think he cares about that. I think he knows too is the guy, but he doesn't really want to hurt the guy who, you know, was so good for them last year. And I, it sort of shows like a fatherly figure to me from Nick Saban. Like you can tell he's upset. Nick Saban has a soft side. I, I guess. KJ? Is that I, what I'm hearing you say? Believe it or not. I yeah, think I couldn't disagree with you thing. more, good JJ. <laughs> I I watched that game and it was obvious that. Tua is the better quarterback sure. than Jalen Hurts. And all he had to say, if he wanted to protect them, is, I thought they both played extremely well. We're going to, this week, go back out in the practice field, and I'm going to determine who's going to start, and I'll announce that later this week. But I thought both guys did everything that I asked them to do. I thought, well, how know, hard is it like to that. say that? And yeah, and at what point can we stop, like, why can't he say one was better than the other? Maybe because he can't pronounce Tua Tungo Vailoa. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> but I... Nick Saban 
likes to make his own rules, right? And he likes to, I mean, because any other coach in that same situation would have been asked the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. If you run dual quarterbacks out there, very rarely are they, or do coaches, college coaches, especially at places like Alabama, use a two quarterback system very often. They just don't do it because it usually doesn't work. So anybody else is getting asked the same question and he's trying to set himself apart and, and turn this into a, you're villainizing these kids and you, you want me to say something bad so that you have something to talk about on your sports talk show. No, we don't. We want you to analyze your quarterbacks. That's all we're asking you to do. Just You don't have to tell us who you're gonna go with. Give an assessment of what you saw out of the two guys. Three of them actually went out there, but the two who took the most reps, what did you see? That's why I'm standing here with this microphone. I mean, a sideliner's job almost in football anymore is obsolete. I mean, the point of them being out there anymore unfortunately is almost obsolete because we there's a camera everywhere we get to see everything and so when she has her few minutes to actually be involved in the broadcast and and they do the traditional let's talk about the game with the coach the winning coach after the game coach you had two quarterbacks play what did you think of their performance and he turns it into this whiny defensive um i don't know i'm gonna stomp around like rumpelstiltskin act and it's old like, we get it. You don't want to name anybody. She's not asking you to do it. Just assess what you saw. I feel like he knew that he messed up right away mm -hmm. because he got real friendly. If you listen to the whole, like, her whole sound bite, it's, like, you know, some close to a minute long, but he got really friendly afterwards. And I, and he, I think he and later, he, like, called and apologized he to he her. He said, Marie, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and, and her Laura, name's Marie. Marie. I'm really <laughs> sorry. Laura, why? <laughs> Dawn? <laughs> I'm real sorry, Don. Well, because of how defensive he got, it almost is like, look, I, I know he I took it out of her. I don't know yeah. if he's really mad at her. I think he's mad at the whole thing because any time because he, he has should any have kind made of a, a press decision. conference or anything, people want to know which quarterback you're going to go. You're the University of Freaking Alabama. People want to know. You don't think he's made is. a decision by now? Oh, I think he has. Yeah. No, he I'm has like, two of us. No, that's what I'm week. saying. That's what I'm saying. I think he's defensive because he's like, yeah, I probably should have made a decision. No, like, but he has. But he just doesn't want to go around he's, telling all the media thing. what he's, he's doing. You know, but he can, of, he can uh, give he a non-answer without long. jumping down yeah. her throat. Mm -hmm. And he got sick and tired of people asking him about the starting quarterbacks because he didn't name a starting quarterback. But you can still – Dan Mullen didn't name a starting quarterback until uh, – he did it before Nick Saban did, but he didn't do it until the week of. And he never got frustrated with people asking. He just every time said, we're still analyzing. Right. That's all you have to say. N Nick Saban – Thinks he that doesn't get to be above all the questions that traditionally Yeah, he thinks be that asked. he's better be than right. right the situation. Yeah. And obviously, with all the backlash, mm -hmm. then he called to apologize and realized he wasn't. Well, right. maybe he just was having a bad moment. And I think that he sort of caught himself <laughs> in that bad moment. His team just and then sort of, yeah. He can't enjoy anything. <laughs> he can't. You're a, absolutely right. He had like a, he there a, was a pick six by Alabama, like late in the game. And they showed him on the sideline. He was pissed mm -hmm. about yeah. something. Yes. I don't know what, but well, it, it, he can't enjoy. I think it's just the, these uh, these coaches in like sort of high profile situations. We saw it with Doug Peterson. I think it was over the weekend or maybe even this morning. He got a little snippy. Head coach of the Eagles. He got snippy with reporters asking about start their starting quarterback. You know, competition. Not even a competition, but the status well, of Carson, Carson wins. wins. Right. Um, available. But if Nick Foles is obviously named as the starter, and he's like, I don't know why you guys are going to keep at or putting words in my mouth. And it's like, well, just name a starter. It's it's okay if Carson Wentz isn't starting week one. It's <laughs> perfectly fine. He probably shouldn't be starting week one after suffering that kind of injury and then it turns into something more than it has to be. Like you know you're going to be asked these questions. Be prepared. Well something else that might not have uh, come across as I don't know nice. I don't know how else to put it. Former you know college commentator that would be Brett Musburger now Raiders voice tweeted out um, over the weekend. Welcome AJ McCarron to Raider family. Can't wait for the quote unquote beautiful Mrs. McCarron to join us in Oakland. <laughs> now, if you remember, Musburger is infamous for when he was calling a game when McCarron was playing quarterback and there was his then girlfriend in the crowd and he just went on and on and it was just getting creepier and yes. creepier. And so then he tweets this out. So do you think it's because of, of, if when you look at the thread, it's like split. You get the 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 creepy guy in the bushes lurking, <laughs> gifts, and then you get the ah. Oh, at least he's owning it. So do you think it's funny or do you think it's like 
Uh, no, still not. I good. thought it was funny. I I love it in today's sort of social media age when people double down on what they've said in the past. And if he thinks she's beautiful, then I mean she is beautiful. I I just don't know why he can't call a beautiful woman beautiful. I, it's just, it it was it was funny to me when I saw it. I thought it was no harm, no foul, and he was trying to make a joke of it. Rue? Um, I thought the initial comments were creepy as hell. <laughs> what I mean, it's like old enough to be a grandpa, and mm-hmm. and the fact that they kept going, it was uncomfortable. I mean, that's un- mm-hmm. that's really uncomfortable. He's poking. Listen, he gives zeros right now. He hosts his <laughs> own like gambling show. I think he lives out in Vegas. Yeah, he's calling the games. He does for the whatever Raiders. he wants to do. He's this crusty old man. And they just like, call him up and they're like, hey, you want a job with the Raiders? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, sure. he's doing whatever he wants to do. I think it's. He's poking fun at himself. <laughs> and I guess if she's okay with it and she's not, it doesn't make her uncomfortable, whatever. But the first time around, it was, it was creepy and uncomfortable, <laughs> and he's a sicko. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure why he puts beautiful in quotation marks. I don't because that's what he, he knew what saying. he was doing. He, he was, was doubling himself down. Himself out. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be better to put it in italics to call yourself out. Oh, you can't do that on Twitter, though. Self-deprecating, I guess maybe not on Twitter, but the quotation marks make it seem like she's not oh, like really she's not beautiful, beautiful, right? right? So that's no, 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 the yeah. only thing that no, maybe put it in all caps because you like remember when I called her beautiful. And yeah, it was so weird that's my only caps. Uh, uh, but she was of all the stop. of all the things in college football, God. I am so not worried about let whatever me, Brent Musburger tweets. Just, I cared way more right. about what happened on the field. Let, let me my just football say team looks fantastic, even though it was a bad. If Beth Mullins, who I believe is the only female. Play by play voice mm-hmm. in yes. football across the board, whether college or NFL. It's phenomenal, by the way. I think she's great. Uh, says in her broadcast, as they're panning the crowd of one of these shirtless Florida State guys in their glittery, and it's like, wow, do you see the body on that guy? Do you, isn't that <laughs> it? Would no, be so awful. That, she wouldn't <laughs> say that because that doesn't happen right. because that's not the way women work. Most we can oogle and oddle at, at guys we, and we, we do all the time on this show. Right. But Brent Musburger, by the way, famously, uh, there was a shot, it was a Florida State Miami game in the early 2000s and there was those girls that would always wear like bikini tops. Jen yeah. Sturger? Yeah. Yes. yes. And it was, he like made a statement that was like, 50,000 red-blooded American men just uh, you know, tried to get into Florida State or whatever, and that ended up being Jen Sturger. Got her famous, got her like a big interview. So his creepiness. That's right. Pays off. Yes. Dang it. I never dressed. I didn't so. dress the right way to go to Oklahoma State football games. That's where my life went wrong. Yeah, they were. And you were dating the quarterback. <laughs> Clearly not. Was yeah. Jen Sturger dating the quarterback? No, no Catherine Webb. No, she was just getting oh, unsolicited yeah. texts from yeah. quarterbacks. No, we can't. Or oh, Catherine Webb. She was actually like dressed like a normal. Personality. Yes, and she's gorgeous. And again, yeah, I, I don't have a Miss problem. Miss Alabama like, or something? I, there's a something. place for like talking about pretty women and good looking dudes and national broadcast. Not usually where you. Well, make if you say comments. it one time, like, oh, that's why you want to play quarterback because then you get oh, look, really beautiful. Yeah, you're woman, AJ McCarron. Boom, no one ever talks about it. You know, but to say it five times no, and then the creepy. camera. Yeah, at some point, creepy. the executive producer creepy. should have said, and that's stop enough. cutting to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's enough well. already. Ah, Blythe, I found this out today and I, had to, I wanted to ask you as a Louisville fan. So I learned that Bobby Petrino has three of his family members among the ten on-field coaches on his staff, a son and two in-laws, each making $650,000, and two of those are defensive coaches. So after what Alabama did and gained, what, over 500 yards against Louisville, does that kind of make you concerned that he's hiring family members nepotism. instead of yeah, of instead of outside people? No, I mean, okay. I'd have to look at the scale as far as what everybody else is being paid, especially against other comparable schools, in order to see if that's an outlier or if it's sort of commonplace. Uh, the, the, uh, amount they're getting paid is probably common. Moreover, just that the defense didn't show up, I guess, and, and now you're at least that, that, outside looking in, I'm just wondering. But as far as a you know an ACC team, especially Louisville, every, anytime they faced off against an SEC team, it's just, it's almost that they're just dwarfed in, in size. And I think that no going into this game, we knew we were going to get smashed. And I... I, I just don't know what else to think about it. I mean, to, in order to have a full gauge of how this team is going to perform, you're going to have to play anybody else but Bama. Well, and I, as a fan, I'm always looking for stuff to be critical of for the for the Gators specifically this season. Todd Grantham is the defensive coordinator. I don't really like Todd Grantham because back in 2007, Todd Grantham did the slit the throat mm-hmm. sign towards a Gators kicker. Because
because he was at the time the Georgia defensive coordinator playing against Florida. And so I've always thought that's a really trash move for a coach to make, and I don't like it. Yet now he's the defensive coordinator for Florida. So the moment that the defense doesn't play well, I'm going to be pointing my finger at Todd Grantham and saying, see, I didn't want him as a coach here anyway. So that's why I was just curious. From a fan perspective, I'm always, if, if yeah. they're not living up to what I expect, I'm willing to be critical. Of I mean, this the school in general hasn't lived up to expectations over the past few years. Yeah, so I did that. Yeah, it's um that's that's low really low down on my criticism list for for Louisville. Um, but I I mean I I guess a fan has every right to question their own school's experiences and their own school hi, school hires. I just don't know how the two situations are comparable, and I don't know how they're you know their pay scale and performance based. I mean, anytime you go into a job, you are probably getting that job based off of who you know, and I think that that is uh, the same for in college football as well as other industries. All right, when we come back, we're going to get it back to the Jaguars. You're listening to Helmets and Heels, built by Dream Funners Homes on 1010XL. It was a long Ready? They gave me a tell you. Did you hear? The last two years, the Jaguars returned a punt for a touchdown, earning local families $100,000 towards a Dream Finders home. Lauren Brooks here letting know that could be you this season. Visit any Dream Finders homes model and register to win the tickets to the house promotion for your chance at scoring $100,000 towards your Dream Finders home. That's right, $100,000 towards a Dream Finders home if the Jaguars return a punt for a touchdown. That's Dream Finders homes, homes built to fit your lifestyle. Thank you. Next one, Fold City. Okay. Thank you, sir. Ready for that next break. Yeah, I thought this was cool, the tailgate schedule. Yeah. That was really it's, neat. It's the first time they've ever done it Yeah. for the home tailgates. It's a fun idea. And they have, I know for like the primetime games in the past, they've done some special stuff. Um, but I really like the themed ideas because yeah. we started doing it at our tailgates. Um, right. You know, like a New England tailgate. Right. You know, do you get chowder and you know things like laps? Yeah. Gotta get some laps. We started on a group text today and started going back and forth about the food that we should have on on Sunday. That's cool. Thing, but I like. Uh, it. We got some good ideas, I think. Did you see this Will Myers thing? Yes. Did That's you listen to it. I didn't well, listen, but I read what he... It's pretty funny. It's funny. Like, when you listen to it, it's way funnier because the guy that he's playing with is, like, a minor leaguer for San Diego, and he's like, hey, man, I'm streaming. And he just, like, is quiet for a couple of seconds, and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's funny. Yeah, it is. Now, isn't Will Myers the one that used to be um, with the Rays? Yeah. Right? He was, like, the number one pick. So he's playing Fortnite. Yeah, and complaining about his man. Yeah. Saying Andy could not be any worse than he is right now. <laughs> he's like, they're making us do whatever kind of drills in September. That's funny. <laughs> How are the Padres doing anyways? They're pretty terrible. The dads. The well, dads. Well, then. And they spent, like, way too much money on their <laughs> I mean, that's funny, man. Yeah. Fortnite gets everybody in trouble. <laughs> the internet. This guy, <laughs> he just tweeted out, I just cut the Marios off my socks since they won't put Waligi in Smash Brothers. <laughs> Former Mario fan. Get ready, Nintendo. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody sent me that text yesterday of those socks. I'm like, yeah, Phil Knight's really pissed off. Right? I'm sure he cares. Yeah, you already spent your money on the product, you idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there's like... <laughs> A handful of companies, probably more than a handful, that uh, I don't really care what they did. I would never stop buying them. If they were like <laughs> sacrificing babies at Nike, I'd be like, you know what? I you know, yeah. they probably had good reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's an overpopulation problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. Nike, <laughs> Disney, Chick Fil A. Yeah, they they, they really like, could do anything. I don't watch any ESPN like actual shows, but when it comes to the games, it's like, what am I not gonna watch? The you know? Yeah. And, yeah, there's a few Sometimes. companies. I, uh, uh, I saw, I remember probably like five or six months ago, Monique was like, oh, they weren't giving me enough money for my Netflix special. Mm. It was like, because I'm black and a woman and all this. And so some people were like, well, I'm a Monique fan, but I'm not about to 
stop <laughs> using Netflix. I mean, come on. <laughs> There's just certain lines that won't be crossed. Yeah. Monique, you're just not popular anymore. <laughs> I, I know. Maybe because it's not 1999. Right. Maybe it's because your market demands that Ow. price. Terry Bradshaw rips Mike Tomlin. She went on the uh, the Breakfast, Breakfast Club. Club. <laughs> that interview was oof. You know, she her husband was weird. She kept calling him daddy. Remember that? Yeah. And ooh. he was like using like mind control on her for this whole thing. I don't know. She's a she ended up walking out in the middle of the interview too. Yeah, like she was. E even when like certain comedians have a problem with like Charlamagne on that show, they'll come in and have a fun time. But she was like ready for action right away. It's not a good look for. I don't think she's. Has she done any interviews since then? I, I think she like went straight to Twitter after I that think interview. Is officially done. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Part of terrible UPN shows. <laughs> they barely even let white people watch UPN. Is that still a network? No, but remember when it was? It was like it was only black. Shows. Yeah. But they had Martin, which I love Martin. Yeah, Martin was all time great. Sister and sister, my sister loved that. Show. <laughs> Did they have Moesha in there too? I don't remember. Alright, here we go. Brought to you by Darlie's Plumbing, where quality counts. Most gators are abnormally aggressive. Get your gators on 1010XL. You're listening to Helmets and Heels, built by Dreamfinders Homes. Presented by Underwood Jewelers and American Window Products. On 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Welcome back into Helmets and Heels, built by Dreamfinders Homes. Jaguars have their first real game of the season this Sunday, 1 p.m. against the Giants. It's an away game, so obviously, you know, the tailgate is going to be a little bit scaled down if you're having it at your house. But are you guys, how are, what is your current game day viewing experience going to be like this Sunday? Donna might be in the hospital. Uh, mine's right. up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is awesome because you'll have free babysitting. Right? <laughs> up in the air. Well, so. for one kid. That's what I'll go with. Well, but your other one. No, you're Either not way, I'm in bed. Ever. Is it really free, though? Kind of it is. I don't know. I, I'm going yeah. to be realist for five seconds here. Well, I'm Navy, I'm, so yes, it's free. Yeah. Oh, I, I always <laughs> sure. like, they're like, oh, if you need to go home, I'm like, no, I'm good. Nope. Somebody's <laughs> waiting on me for once and <laughs> will bring me the baby back and forth. I don't know that I do that anyway, uh, anymore, but all my friends were like, oh, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I'm like, oh, no. It was like three days of peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the book of massage. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. But tailgating-wise, what do you guys do? Or, or watching the game, 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 game watch party-wise. Yeah, we show Sunday morning, yep. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then we were talking about it yesterday, hanging out, thinking a pool party would be fantastic to watch the game, put the TV outside, party. and uh, yeah, grill out. That's that's my vote. Oh my gosh, I did that last week for college football, the start of college football. It was great. It was fantastic. But the reason I bring this question up is because uh, Bolt City Brigade, local Jaguars fan group, uh, it's been around for a while, but this is the first season that they're actually having themed tailgates. And so not only just home games, but also away games. I believe the, all the away game watch parties are at Wicked Barley uh, Brewing, which is a, a great spot to watch a game if you haven't watched a game there or even just been there in general. But they're doing a lot of different themed tailgates based off of the team that they're playing against. So, for example, like with this weekend coming up, we're facing off against the Giants. And so with our, you know, sort of football family, like what I like to call them, I I was confused. I'm like, what is sort of a signature, like, New York food? I guess, like, the red-based clam chowder. Oh, I would um, say pizza. But, yeah, yeah, pizza It was one of the, the the top things that were recommended. So, like, a New York-style mm -hmm. pizza. Um, bro my brother also recommended New York strips because he wants to annihilate the New York strips. Does it nice. um, throw you off that the game is technically a New New Jersey? No. Don't change the food at all? No, I mean, it's okay. still New York Giants. So, that's still. <laughs> I don't even know what, like, the Jets, do they have? A, I don't even know. Do the Jets have themed food? Doubt they do. I would imagine the Giants more have themed that's food. That's a good question. I don't know. But there can, were. Maybe you can just get your food thrown at you, like a jet. 
<laughs> just th- throw your food. Like out of anger from the fans? <laughs> right. I don't know. But do you guys theme your tailgates at all or, or food-wise, drink-wise? Because I think this is sort of a recent trend that fans are starting to do this. I'm more of a superstitious person. So if it works for the first week, I will continue to do it. If it doesn't, I would completely change it. So you're gonna you win when you're drinking PBR. You keep drinking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. When the Cubs made the run in the World Series, we drank a lot of old style because that's old what they style? sell at Wrigley Field. Yes. So you just keep doing what's working. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, that's what that was. That's their beer. You know. Are uh, you a Cubs fan? Well, I'm married one. Okay. So. <laughs> I guess you are. I am. Yeah. Which is great at times or whatever. Um. I didn't, I'll tell you for me, I covered the college game for so long that I never really got to tailgate for a while, but I would always, if I, before I got into this business, would go and, and would have fun tailgates, and there wasn't ever themed food, but there was always enough food, enough booze mm-hmm. for everybody, and there was always like those staple things, like, you know those uh, jalapeno poppers, that yes. the cream cheese and the bacon and the things, and, and spicy food gives me the worst hiccup, so if I got too out of control, <laughs> I was like obnoxiously hiccuping. And as far as the NFL goes, I'm the only person in my house that enjoys the NFL. Mm-hmm. My husband doesn't really care about the NFL. And my kids really, my son does a little bit, but my daughter's like, God, more sports on the television, please. I'm going to move out. So uh, for me on Sunday, it'll be our kickoff show from 8 to 10. Sponsored by Sawyer Guest, by the way, Lauren Brooks. And, Correct. And then um, it might be mimosas. I don't know. It depends on how lazy I can be with the rest of the day. You know what I mean? Like, I would like to just hole up all day Sunday and not do anything and just watch mm. NFL mm-hmm. people on Sunday. But I have to get everybody else in the house to agree to, like, let me do that. So See, I was, I was pretty confused as to what kind of food didn't even to even pitch for this game. But I, I did a little Googling, and there was a website that recommended pastrami on rye, uh-huh. uh, bagels with cream cheese and salmon, mm-hmm. which is... Lox. Bagels and lox, yeah. yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's very good either. Uh, no. Cheesecake? Uh, yeah, cheesecake, cheesecake was definitely one of them. Uh, New York style pizza, which, which is uh, my favorite kind of pizza. And that way. is, uh, it also brings up another topic. The the Athletic actually hired a Jaguar specific report or beat writer today, Daniel Popper, and he asked earlier about where to get the best New York style pizza because he's moving from New York down to Jacksonville in order to cover the team. And V's, so if you're looking for New York style pizza, there's V's pizza that was highly recommended, Biggie's pizza, which I can sing to the high heavens on, and then uh, Carmine's and Riverside, and then cheesecake was also on this list too. I I'd say Tommy's right, right here around the corner, man. Their their style is that's your go-to pizza spot. Yeah, that, I think that I did see them mentioned too. Yeah. It's what about fantastic. you, Lauren? Are you doing anything special? Is just pool party on Sunday? Oh yeah, I am not planning anything other than the show. <laughs> 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 After that, then I'm I'm just there to watch football. I I love when other people get into themes and stuff. It's just yeah, for me. I'll prepare the show Saturday. By the time Sunday rolls around, I just want to sit back and just want to relax. Does it change for you depending on how Saturday goes? Does the does Sunday change? Not really, um, because again, when you working Sundays, I'm not going to go usually to Gainesville on Saturdays. Right. So maybe that's how it changes. But even like if Florida was playing LSU, let's say, and I was going to go tailgate. I wouldn't make food specific to LSU. I would just make what I want. Now, granted, I love Cajun food, but I would feel like I'm, <laughs> then I'm eating the enemy's right. like bounty. So then that would seem backwards almost to me. I, I want to like always make. Well, they, my my brother made a I good want. point. He's like, I want to make this food and then I want to annihilate it. And I was like, Yeah, that's good. That's a good way of putting it. And we always have jag ju- what we like to call jag juice at every single uh, watch party, and that just carried on from last season. So we'll have it again this year. And I think Publix actually will hand out little free recipe. Cards cards in order to make prowl punch so if you wanted to make like That's a teal cool. color drink then uh, go to Publix pick What's up one Jags juice usually it's um, it's rum and then curacao like the beer the blue mm-hmm. curacao uh, ginger ale and then lime juice Yum. so it's really it's really good anytime the Jaguars score mm-hmm. then uh, we take a shot at the Jag juice mm-hmm. and last year it unex- this started off at the beginning of the season it started off like oh we're going to take maybe two shots a game and uh, it uh, <laughs> quickly expanded after that <laughs> so <laughs> it turned into a huge party but going from off going from off the field to on the field we've watched a ton of preseason we watched a ton of practices gone through the whole off season so which teams do you think are going to be the biggest surprise and which team do you think is going to be the biggest disappointment I'll start with surprise. I think after this Khalil Mack trade, the Bears can go in that category. They're in a really tough division, 
but getting one of the best pass rushers in the NFL can change the name of the game. And then, obviously, Allen Robinson they have now, and then tight end Trey Burton, who went from the Eagles to the Bears. I think they're going to have better offensive weapons. It's year two for Mitch Trubisky. Last year, I don't think they really did a whole lot with him, but this year they're going to be able to kind of unleash him. And again, really tough division in the NFC North, but if anybody's going to make a leap, I think it's going to be the Bears. Nice. The biggest bust and the biggest surprise, is that what you're asking? Yes. I think, well, I don't know if this is much of a surprise. I think the Texans are going to be better than, I mean, obviously with hmm. Deshaun Watson coming back and then uh, J.J. Watt, who missed, what, did he miss all of last season or most, most of, of it? Yeah, I he played remember. in the first game against the Jaguars. I and then that was after. it, right? Yeah. I don't or, Not exactly much after. Yeah. Either way, I think they're going to, I mean, I, with all due respect to the team we cover, I think we get blinded a lot by what goes on in the AFC South and want to just think it's locked up by the Jags. But I think the Texans are going to be, are going to be the team to beat maybe uh, even more so than Jacksonville. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the biggest bust, which sounds contradictory because they're constantly a bust, but the Cleveland Browns, right? <laughs> Because they did hard knocks. It can't get worse than winless. I know, I know. And that's why I'm, uh, this is going to be like can't not, go down the hill. not the right answer. But but I think anything, I, I can't decide. There are people who are like, I got Baker Mayfield now. And Josh and Gordon, Josh Gordon and comes back. And they're really going to get it figured out this year. And did you see them on hard knocks? And they're so lovable. They And they gain the love of people who got hooked on hard knocks. And... I think they're still going to just be a disappointment and fall flat. They're at least the smartest going, oh. person on the team, Carl Nassib. Right. How are you supposed to get 10% if you don't have Carl Nassib? What bank is offering 10% financial returns? Advisor. I don't know. He's like, I don't even know. But um, So I think they're the ones. I kind of like muffed your question around. Sorry, Blythe. But who have the who have people maybe bought in the most who are not going to really achieve as mu- as much as people assume. That they See, are. I think if they win, because the Browns are my pick, we're going to be the, the the biggest surprise just because of their offensive they weapons, win more than weapons, their offensive games. line. Right, exactly. So if they win five games, which is what I'm predicting, I think Vegas has them at six games. If they win five games, I think that's a hugely successful year for them, uh, coming from no wins last year, one win the previous year. Um, but as far as the, the the biggest dumpster fire, I have to go with the Raiders. Not only do you trade away one the best probably the best edge rusher in the game but you you're giving all of your power to, for 10 years to a guy that's been in media for the past decade and it, it just it, it, I knew when they signed this hundred million dollar Gruden deal that it was going to be a disaster and this after trading away uh, the best red rusher on the team then there's uh, Raiders fans that are going online and they're auctioning off their unborn child's fandom, which I thought was hilarious. And he goes into talking about how he's going to uh, no Broncos, Chiefs, or Patriots are allowed to bid on the unborn child's fandom, which is due in 2019. So he's sending out all these like sonogram pictures to all of these other teams, not named the 49ers, Broncos, Chiefs, or Patriots, and you can apply in order to to uh, have your this unborn child's fandom because he's really sick of Gruden and Mark Davis. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I would say is he hasn't coached a game yet, so at least give him, you know, a few games. To no, I, I called it a dumpster fire immediately when they hired him. <laughs> but uh, that's what I would say to the fan auctioning off the unborn kids. No, he fandom. said he's Wait, just, he's sick. And see if, I mean, if they start 4-0, is he going to change his mind, or does the kids still get to Well, it, 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 he auction? promises to the winning bidder, we will not trade the baby to the Bears after four glorious years. We will not name our second baby a bunch of different names. Uh, he goes into, we will not invest $70 million into our baby just because they can throw 70 yards from their knees. So he goes into all of these. It's, it's very uh, thought out, a, a thought out response, which Obviously, I thought was great. Was Marcus Russell. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he was alluding to. Uh, dumpster fire for me, I would say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're not expected to be world beaters, but losing your quarterback for the first three games of the year and then, oh, by the way, and Jameis Winston because of the suspension, but, oh, by the way, the Bucks haven't even confirmed that if Jameis, once he Jameis does come back, that he'll be the starting quarterback. Uh, that's kind of a problem. Plus, they're in the division with the Saints, the Falcons, and the Panthers, and uh-huh. I don't expect any of them to fall back. Demark, what say you? Biggest uh-huh. surprise and biggest disappointment. I don't know if it's a surprise to pick the Niners. Um, a surprise. I don't know if we're surprised that you picked the Niners. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I just that that would be you know. I know that they I stunk last good. year until they played Jimmy G. So I just I think they're <laughs> gonna be good. I think and a lot of people are agreeing with you. I, I think the dumpster fire will be Miami. Hmm. Cause true. Just I mean, 
what else do they have? There's nothing to be excited about. There's on my team. nothing to be excited about. The return it. of Ryan Tannehill doesn't get you going. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no. I can't say that it does. You know, it's the only thing exciting about Miami is when I watch ballers and I see Miami. <laughs> that's that's about it. It's Who so. will finish after the Patriots in that division? Um. Well, I mean, it depends. You have Darnold with the Jets. Is he actually going to be that good? The I mean, Jets are always a disaster. I don't know if he's going to be that good. I just know that he's the only one they have confidence in. And the, the Bills with Peterman. It's just... Uh, <laughs> for now. Peterman for now. It's a... I mean, it's just a juggling act right there. So, I... I not Miami. Can't tell you that much. <laughs> I'm cheering for Nathan Peterman because he's from here. That's fine. <laughs> I'm cheering That's for old school. I'm like cheering for, good for, I'm you. Cheering for all the Jets for quarterbacks to go down so Johnny starts. <laughs> yeah, because he's from here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm cheering for Johnny Wilford, and I, I would cheer for him too. I don't think anybody's cheering for Miami. I think that's all in agreement. <laughs> nope. Nope. We, we all think they'll me. finish last. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there you go. Any surprise? No. No surprise. Okay. No, my, right. I told you my surprise was the Niners. I don't know how much of a surprise that is. No, it's not a surprise. I know. Dose of Daily's Place when we come back, and we're giving away a Peter Brook chocolate heel plus a little weird food to discuss. You're listening to Helmets and Heels built by Dream Fighters Homes on 1010XL. Under center. <laughs> okay, this is a minute long, so you got 60 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Dude, seriously, this lady with the... Has, has, any, has she been on the internet? Has anybody talked to this lady? I think so. So what did somebody what are you say? talking about? About the chicken finger? Oh, oh. Has yeah. she? I don't know that part. Mom, I was telling mom about it. Mom goes, maybe she's Woman pregnant. Woman finger and co. But finger oh, so and co. Co. Explains, explains her odd habit. Explains her odd habit. It definitely sounds gross. I have a different spin on this. So just bear with but me. has she, like, come forward? I will bear Yeah, with she you. says, my dad started me with dicking. Dicking. <laughs> dipping. <laughs> she made an official announcement. Dipping. Wow. Chicken fingers in soda. I think to quote cool it down, but I just love the taste and kept going. Once I got older, I gave it up for a while, assuming it would be way too. Seconds. All right, thank you. Bring it. One day I said, "Eff it." <laughs> started. <laughs> so kind of like French fries in a milkshake, like a I sweet know, but, and salty. But I have this. Lauren Brooks here, and I find myself recommending Bold City Health to a new person every week. My cousin just moved to Jacksonville, and she's on the lookout for a chiropractor since her back has really been hurting her. I was so excited to tell her about Dr. Aaron and Dr. April at Bold City Health and how the entire staff is so great. I know that not only will her back start to feel better with regular trips, but she'll also learn how to take care of her body to achieve maximum overall health. If you're looking to reduce pain or looking for a healthier lifestyle, call Bold City Health today at 379-4621 or find them online at boldcitychiropractic.com. Check out the free seminar, Lasting Immunity, Prevention is Powerful, on Saturday, September 22nd at Journey Church at 9 a.m. Or how about a free dinner? Monday, September 24th is the monthly community dinner at South Kitchen and Spirits at 6 o'clock. Again, to register and to find out more information about Bold City Health, head to boldcitychiropractic.com. Thank you. Thank you. Is All Pro next? Uh, Dream Finders, actually. All Pro's last. Okay. Thank you. The funny part is that the story starts with me telling my nephews, listen, I'm about to do something really weird. It's a huge <laughs> secret and you can't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell your world parents knows don't tell any adults because it's pretty embarrassing. Then that I, day? That's what she's, t she's saying. I told my nephews, hey, I'm about to do something <laughs> and people are going to judge me. And it ended up being a right. She said, then I got caught by some cameraman and now I'm viral. <laughs> Although dipping sauce, blah, 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 why are we dipping chicken fingers into soda? Why is this happening? Someone called the cops right now, <laughs> Barstool said. Uh, oh, shoot, that's funny. People said she needs to go to jail, five to ten years minimum. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she was doing. I just glad it wasn't somebody from Arkansas. You know, they'd been like, oh, those redneck fuckers don't know what they're doing. <laughs> somebody at the fancy U.S. Open. I didn't know they sold chicken fingers at the U.S. Open. <laughs> Oh, it's still New York. 
She said, I've been in hyster I've been in hysterical laughter for 24 hours. I do think it's gross and definitely sounds gross, so I totally get where they're coming from. She said, I almost judge the people that are defending me more so. The best is the people that know me because they have had to deal with my weird eating habits forever, and they're like, ha, 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 now the world knows you're a freak. <laughs> now I want to know. episode where George is at oh, yeah. the press open eating an ice cream. Yeah, that's and, right. And all like, over his face like a kid. And he gets on TV. It's the yes. same thing. Dude, I'm not going to lie. When I ate, oh, when, I, when we went to the uh, Jack's, the jumbo shrimp uh -huh. game on Monday. Yesterday. Yes, thank you. That was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. No doubt about that. I ordered one of those um, helmet nachos. Things. Yes. No. Yes, with the pulled pork and the shrimp. Oh, and it man. is like, and I freaking was like elbow deep in that thing, and I thought, here's one. Like somebody's gonna catch me. And like, tweet, and like there's Lauren Ruby and the big ass pig at the game, not letting any of those get away. Somebody, she's afraid somebody's gonna steal her food. <laughs> Because I eat like super fast and I what have is zero meal. Pulled pork nachos? Pulled pork nachos, shrimp. The shrimp is a little. It's a little weird. Yeah, uh, we had them yeah. whenever we we were out there for a live broadcast, and they ate, they were out of pork, so it was just the shrimp yeah, and I the notch. I couldn't eat all. The and shrimp. I was like, uh, you know, it's a little like <laughs> the texture. Something about it is like maybe if it had salsa on it or something. It's not grilled, and it's it's, it's not plain grilled. Like, grilled. It's yeah, not like blackened. Like, shrimp. Let's throw some in there. Yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, I almost feel like it's microwaved, like it's not even yeah. like on a grill. Like I don't know. And they're but sponsored by Safe grill. Harbor. It's the best shrimp on the planet. Well, I just yeah. can't. It's just it's a weird combination. <laughs> that's stupid. But the Hockey Hall of Fame considers outlawing Stanley Cup oh, cake. What? No. Cake because that's going to make cake it stop. Way too Get long. the fuck out of here. Kegging, I don't know. I, I didn't drink beer at all. Okay? Like telling Jalen Ramsey not I to talk know. crap on the field. It's going to happen. Let's talk about shots, but I can't talk about kegs. <laughs> never done a keg stand? No. Nope. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. Nope. I that would, would give us a flip. That, that, that would. <laughs> Hang your ass upside down. Trust me, I've been doing the... You know, they're called Spinning Babies. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. There's a website, and it talks about how you, I don't know why they call it spinning, but whatever. And one like, of the exercises thank you for put your legs me. up, like, on a table or chair, and then head down. Mm. Ooh, there's much blood that you get rushed. Right away, I'm like, no. <laughs> this isn't going to work. <laughs> Homes. Presented by Underwood Jewelers and American Window Products. On 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Welcome back to Helmets and Heels, built by Dream Finders Homes, as we have Ashlyn Sullivan join us like we do every week, digital host and reporter for Jaguars.com. Hello, Ashlyn. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys? We are fantastic, thanks. All right, you and I spoke a little earlier today. Coach Hackett is going to join us, Jaguars Offensive Coordinator. And you and he have actually spoken about how he loves the female perspective on football. Is that right? He is. He's a big fan of helmet and heels. It was funny. One day, it was probably about a month ago, I was walking down the hallway. He kind of goes, hey, Ashley, great job on helmet and heels last night. I was like, you, you were listening? He goes, oh, yeah, I listen all the time. I think it's great. And we got into talking about it more. And he was saying how he's so used to the super critical journalistic approach of breaking down the third string linebacker in the battle and really trying to dig deep into the team. And he goes, I love how you guys just break down the major topics of the team and have a more conversational approach to it. So it was really refreshing to hear someone like Nathaniel Hackett, one is listening and has an opinion on how female journalists approach football. So it was funny when you said today that he was going to be on the show. I'm like, ah, he's finally getting the spotlight on one of his favorite shows. Heck yeah. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Well, and I'm sure, you know, he also listens to hear you and how you do. All right, let's get it to a dose of Daily's Place. How did the concert go on Sunday? It went incredibly well. After the concert on Sunday night, I walked into work on Monday, and everyone was beaming. Everyone said it went so well, very little hiccup. Everyone dealt with the lightning really well, they mentioned. They said they would thank the fans for sticking it out with the lightning delays. They said over 44,000 tickets were sold, wow. which is incredible. And, I mean, just from talking to people that went to the concert, they said how great Skinner was, Al Dean, Kid Rock, and all the other bands. It seemed like everyone just had a really good time, and it was everything that everyone wanted it to be. So far right now on the calendar, Ashlyn, we have seven concerts remaining. I know you guys want to try to get one for each home game. Are there any announcements set to be made soon? Not as of now, and I know it's still in the works. They're actually just going to start pushing the in-stadium concerts as well, so they're going to, because that was so well with Skinner 
and it went so smoothly with such a large production. I think they're going to continue to try to um, schedule those, but no, still in the works. I'm sure there'll be more announcements soon, but right now they're really focusing on that kickoff weekend and getting that sold out for all those three concerts. Ashlyn, you were actually the new Void magazine just dropped today, and you have a little mini interview in there talking about your expectations for the upcoming season. What sort of tidbit can you give us on on where you think, I guess, the the, the offensive and the defensive perspective is going to be this season? I mean, obviously, we the defense. We know how talented and athletic the defensive team is, and we know how well they did last season. So, I think for the defensive expectations. I think we just need them to fulfill and live up to what they were last year. And not, I think the greatest thing about the defense was they were always the underdog all season. They always had that chip on their shoulder. And I don't think they should lose that regardless of them getting that recognition. I think that was what made the defense so fun to watch and so great was that chip on their shoulder and that attitude. No matter Super Bowl champions or not, I hope they never, ever lose that. And often, I think the expectations, they got to solidify that running game. I mean, during the playoffs, running game wasn't as great as they know they wanted it to be so getting Andrew Norwell on the team having Leonard Fournette healthy again I think they really need to be the staple of their team because that's what they built around is this running game so to have that be successful especially the first few weeks I think is huge. Ashlyn tell us about Troy Sivan am I saying his last name correctly? You are yes so he is doing a live stream event tonight actually giving a preview to all of his fans about the concert it's going to be on his Facebook live page he's going to play a few of his biggest hits and get everyone excited for his concert in a few weeks. So if you want a preview of that tour, go to his Facebook page tonight and you can check it out. And then next Wednesday, there's a fun concert coming up. Deep Purple and Judas Priest. Are there still tickets available for that? There are. So that is big kickoff weekend, getting ready for the New York Patriots to come to town. So you have Deep Purple and Judas Priest. Then you have uh, Dork Bentley. And then you have Sing and Shaggy. And tickets are available still for all of those. So that'll be a really fun weekend, getting ready for a huge game in Jacksonville. Absolutely. All right, the Giants come up this Sunday. Which Jaguars player do you think is going to stand out on offense and which one on defense? <laughs> Defensively, it's funny. I was going to say Jalen Ramsey, but if we were talking about it today, I'm actually going to interview A.J. Boyd tomorrow about it. It's very highly likely that the Giants probably are going to steer away from putting Odell Beckham Jr. on Jalen Ramsey, which means he's probably going to get some action with A.J. Boyd. And they tend to forget that A.J. Boyd is an all-pro corner as well. So I'm expecting him to have a pretty big game because everyone is hyping up the Jalen Ramsey versus Odell Beckham matchup, and they're forgetting that the A.J. Boy versus Odell Beckham matchup I think will be just as entertaining. And then offensively, I'm going to look at Leonard Fournette and Andrew Normal here, like I said earlier, solidify the running game. I would love to see Leonard Fournette have some huge yards. And then Andrew Normal, this is really his first real game with the Jaguars. He played in the third um, preseason game with the Atlanta Falcons. And to see him move the offensive line, felt his presence the immediate moment he stepped on the field, so I think that would be huge to Jaguar. Wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us, Ashlyn, and of course, people can head to dailiesplace.com for tickets. We will talk to you next week. Thanks so much for joining us. Sounds good. See you guys. All right, and again, Coach Nathaniel Hackett will join us around 7.38 p.m. tonight. All right, JJ, take it away. Well done, JJ. That is your cue if you want to win tonight's Peterburg Chocolate Deal. Text him in the 10th and Excel text line driven by Juval Ford. That would be 641-1010. Either the name of the artist or the name of the song, first person to text that in wins tonight's Peterburg Chocolate Heel. All right. The video, <laughs> the very short video, went viral of a woman dipping her chicken fingers into her soda at the U.S. Open. Tennis version of the U.S. Open in New York. Donna, you saw it and immediately tweeted to all of us on the show. <laughs> what? what is going on? What? Would you try it? Hell no. <laughs> you would need at least a little taste. I don't want anything not? dipped in liquid carbonation. Okay? <laughs> a soda. The only thing, when, when I put it on Twitter, the only thing, reason for that is science. When you put Mentos in a soda bottle to see it explode. And that's it. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Mentos in a soda bottle, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Okay, that's what it does. <laughs>
and that's hilarious, I guess. But no, I'd never want anything, anything in my soda other than ice and rum. Did you not go to fifth grade science class, Lauren? Rose? <laughs> no, I did not. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like the oh, volcanoes that start. everybody makes. I know, but I know Mentos and a soda bottle. Mentos. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. As in the candy? Yeah. The fresh makeup? <laughs> now you're going to have to go home and try it. <laughs> oh, I can't give my kids any more reason to make a mess. I, like <laughs> uh, I, for one, would try this. And it's mostly Same. because I'm from Arkansas. <laughs> also, because there was a place back home in Fayetteville that is one of my favorite restaurants. It's called Hugo's. And if you've ever been to Fayetteville, it's on uh, the square. I know there's some Razorback fans out there who know no, what I'm talking been about. To yes, they have! <laughs> Yes, I have. Here. <laughs> so good. I'm talking to the listeners, Lauren Brooks, not maybe the ladies and JJ in the room. There's this place that's amazing. It's underground. And one of the things they have are chicken fingers because everybody has chicken fingers. And the sauce that comes with them, stay with me here, is like a more, it's like a, a liquidy sweet and sour. You know how sweet and sour at the Chinese restaurant has yeah. like a gel consistency? This is like a liquid. It's dark. It almost looks like soy sauce, but it's sweet and it's hot. And you dip chicken. It's yeah, again. It's not. There's no ketchup consistency. It's not. Sweet but there's dark. no Almost carbonation. Like what the hell does the carbonation matter, Donna? That doesn't hurt hurt anything. I don't know, but it's just it's not disgusting. It, no, the carbonation doesn't do anything to the chicken. I guarantee you, the sweetness of yes. it is just enough to make the salt and the sweet combination. It's not going to get it all soggy and gross like those people who would do the hot dog eating contest and they put oh, it in the water. That's wall. disgusting. What bread is the sickest thing on mm -hmm. the planet, by the way? But a chicken finger's consistency would be crunchy enough to where it won't, like, get all soppy. It'll kind of absorb it and give a little sweet taste. I'm curious now. I would now. do it. I totally would. Why didn't we try? We should have brought We should have tried it. Stan! Yeah. Stan! <laughs> Stan does plenty. I know. I know. No. I, but the wouldn't, one day. Your, wouldn't your Coke then end up occasionally with chicken with fingers? No, no I think so you got a shot of It's not like an Oreo that you let it sit breaded, in there. Until but like you're going to get some in there regardless. It's just like a tap. It's just like, you know, you got to have a drinking Coke like and a dipping Coke. I was going to say, I think you might have to have two different drinks. And what if it's like Dr. Pepper and not Coke? Right. Also, that might be I, we so don't many know, questions. We don't, do we know the flavor of said soda? We're just assuming it's Coke. What if it's like Diet Coke? Coke? That's call disgusting. Coke, even if it's not Coke, the, right? What you pull up oh, right there says finger and Coke. It's a chicken finger and Coke. She does? It says soda. Up at the top in the headline, it says Coke. Oh, okay, you're right. I'm so sorry. You're <laughs> that's right. But, I, but in the that's story, that's it says in a soda. When I first saw it, I wondered if it was a sweet tea because of, right, the whole salty sweet No, thing. no, that's just weird. But How then, is that weird? <laughs> and soda's okay. Because Coke has that caramel-like... Trust me. I, I, I agree. I, I agree. I have a feeling you wouldn't really. I, I would try Coke. I would yeah. not try sweet tea. But I'm not a fan of the whole Wendy's thing when you dip French fries in oh. a frosty. Oh, see, yeah. that's, that's, that's fire. Turn the mic off, JJ. Turn Wendy's off. sucks, but just in general, oh, come on. milkshakes oh. and French fries is really good. See, Even yes. chicken fingers in yes, chicken uh, nugget, milkshakes. Yes, milkshakes. Spicy chicken nuggets mm -hmm. and the chocolate. Oh, yeah. good gosh. Yeah. Oh, I like my ice cream with sprinkles or Butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. You know, what about chicken Ooh. and waffles? The idea, yeah. okay, nope. so, so Coke I would relate more toward like actual syrup, duh, because they're serving a bit like maple syrup, right? When mm -hmm. people eat chicken and waffles, it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. It is. I Not can't wrap my mind. All right, we gotta try it next this. week. That's it. <laughs> there it's we go. insane. So, would, you, would you try it, Lauren? Try it, sure, but I wouldn't want the rest of that drink if I was no, I'm with you. I don't consistently want, like, dipping bloaters. chicken. I just and no double dipping like either. Like you said about wet bread, I don't think I want my chicken. But I also don't dip chicken fingers in anything. Like I like them just the way they are, so that's what? why I'm less no, likely to what? dip them in. Anything. But I also don't eat chicken fingers very often. Oh my um, gosh! I, like ranch. Ranch. I want I want five different mustard. sauces you with my chicken. Often because they must suck with nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, because I try to eat healthy and fried food is not the healthiest thing. Very true. <laughs> yeah, but I'm getting like five different sauces for my chicken <laughs> and barbecue. <laughs> All right, when we and come back, things. Lauren Brew had a fantasy football <laughs> snafu. We will find out what that was and a whole lot more. And remember, Coach Ackett will join us at the bottom of the hour. You're listening to Helmets and Heels, built by Dream Funners Homes on 10 to XL. Team Weekly's Championship. Now I'm starving, and I want nothing but chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have no weird pe pregnancy cravings? 
<laughs> Nothing. Did you hear? The last two years, the Jaguars <laughs> returned a punt for a touchdown, earning Logan Bailey $100,000 towards a dream finder's home. Lauren Brooks here letting you know that could be you this season. Visit any dream finder's homes model and register to win the Take It to the House promotion for your chance at scoring $100,000 towards your dream finder's home. That's right, you can earn $100,000 towards a dream finder's home by registering for the Take It to the House promotion. That's dream finder's homes, homes built to fit your lifestyle. Yeah, no, we're crazy. All right, one more. Really? I always thought, yeah, I've always heard like some oh, pickles in the middle of the night yeah. or pickles, pickles and ice cream. I never had, I didn't no. like barbecue when I was pregnant. It just for whatever reason. Full time. Oh, yeah. You yes. couldn't really eat seafood, so what'd you eat? No, you could eat seafood. It's just they don't want you to have a whole bunch of tuna because of the mercury. Yeah. How, in Oklahoma, they don't eat seafood all the time. I was going to say. Um, I was trying to think, but I really, I was such a pig with Jackson. Were you? I ate everything, and I did not care. And so does he eat everything now? He's actually the better eater out of the two. Yeah. It wasn't, like, healthy stuff. It was, like, yeah, <laughs> double trips to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> like, more than they worried about your sodium or cholesterol or No, anything? they weren't. They were no. like, all right. Okay. They can't, I mean, if you, to a I point. didn't have pre, pre uh, yeah. I didn't have gestational yeah. diabetes or anything like yeah. that. I said, big ass. Do a JT I had Kraft mac and cheese probably three or four times a day. Uh, yeah, that used to be my jam. Kraft mac and cheese. That, that was just jam, y'all are killing me right and, now. And the mini, mac mini, uh, oh, the three mini musketeers. Ones? I would just, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Look here's my bowl of mac and cheese and all my musketeers. See, that's a weird food combo. Yeah, that's, that's a dessert. Well, are you I eating them both eat at, them the, at same the same time? time. You like, like take a bite of one and take no. a bite of the other? No, oh. that's, that's just I thought that's disturbing. what you No, no. You don't have my food and I'd have my dessert. It's gonna sound stupid. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Say it. it. You gotta say it now. You already started. <laughs> Do you guys eat traditional Thanksgiving food? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if like being a Scottish. My family does like half a traditional half Italian food. Okay. I have heard of people doing I think Tony does uh Italian food for, mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well I forget there's lots of Italians. I'm Italian too, so I just well I didn't know if like seafood was all I mean if you guys We do that for New Year's. Seafood? seafood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do a seafood New Year's. With like turkey and mashed potatoes and peas. Just like, like jam. Mm -hmm. Like I look, like I can think of, because I don't eat it very often, but that's like the one thing I think about. Like when we get closer to Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Like homemade mashed potatoes. Doubled eggs. Dipping it. Yes, <laughs> Brown <laughs> gravy <laughs> over everything. Just a little bit of cranberry sauce, like in the same bite as the chi the turkey and the mashed potato and the peas. I will like and mix stuffing. it all together. I don't really care about stuffing. But See, I, I have to labor. I have to uh, level it. It's it's stuffing, and then it's turkey, and then it's mashed potatoes, and then I pour gravy over it, all of it. Did and then I have, have the veggies all on the side, mix it all together. Mm. Did you have Bob Evans where you came from? The restaurant? No, no. They do a wicked awesome Thanksgiving. No, want some Thanksgiving it. food too. That's what we've done. My mom, my mom's worked there for twenty five years, so we just order that and. That's it. Everything oh, comes. Here you go. Um, no. we, we don't have to. Nice and easy. Damn. Yeah. My dad made oyster stuffing one year. So it was a combination of things. Oh, giving traditional with <laughs> seafood. And he made turducken also. Oh, oh I yeah. love turducken. <laughs> Yellow duck. Mm-hmm. So, some seafood. A duck inside of a hen, inside of a turkey. I think that's what it is, a turducken. Yeah, Aww. My mom's friends really love quote, or deviled eggs, so I get deviled eggs all the time. And it's uh, amazing. I, yes, how, yeah. Then I used to only get them like once a year, right. and they all learned that I love them. Who would have thought? My friend Robbie said he used to dunk pizza crust in Coke. Okay. Hmm. I don't want wet pizza crust. I don't, I don't yeah. <laughs> See, I don't eat though. pizza crust, so I can justify <laughs> eating another slice. Yeah. Knowing that that lady said that to her nephews is now <laughs> even <laughs> more funny that she got caught. I love that she has a good attitude now, about it. What, yeah. Oh, that was in Tallahassee, and it was Virginia Tech. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what kind of question was that, JJ? A uh, question from a typical caller. A dumbass fucking question. <laughs> Sometimes I think they he just... literally asked, what town Florida State played West Virginia in yesterday? <laughs> so, well, they didn't play West Virginia. But even, like... 
Phil, why are you calling for that, dude? It's 2018. Get on the internet. <laughs> Like, come on, well, what time does the game the start? When I used to produce, I used to think that they would call to test me. Oh, there's some people that just call literally. Just tell you what to do. No, to test me. Like I feel like they call just to be like, I'm, I'm gonna see what she really does. I'm boring you, huh? No, no, I know. I'm just tired. All right, here we go. Baseball people used to call and go, "What time's the game gonna be over tonight?" I'm like. When it's over. <laughs> it used to make me so mad. I used to get so annoyed. Just hang up on them immediately. What time's the game gonna be over? JJ, you are quite the DJ in there. <laughs> Which I people used to drive me nuts who didn't understand sports talk radio and they'd be like, oh cool, what kind of songs do you play? You're on the radio? I'm like, nope. They're like, aren't you a DJ? Also not true. My kids actually. That would be T Wick. When I first started in sports talk radio, they they just knew it as mom works on the radio. <laughs> we were in the car one day and they go, um, so what songs do you sing? And I'm like, where? And they're like, on the radio. <laughs> No. Nope. So funny. Bless yeah. your heart. They thought you sang. <laughs> yes, they thought they the thought song? my mom's on the radio and okay. she sings songs on the radio before. I'd be like, yeah. let me find Carrie Underwood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, that's me, y'all. Exactly. So now when I'm like, okay, what do you tell people when they ask, what does your mom do? My mom talks about sports on the radio and she makes me go to all these games and that's usually Lila. Jackson's like, I think it's cool. So <laughs> one for two is not bad if I don't screw both of them up. All right. Speaking of screw ups. Nobody cares how your fantasy football team does. They just don't, in general. True. It's the worst kind of radio, unless the show is a fantasy football center right. show and their people are calling in for advice. But if I got on here tomorrow for the midday chalk was like, well, let me tell you how my team did, people would be like, for the love of God, no. Nobody cares, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about my fantasy football team for a moment here. Mm -hmm. But that's only because um, I screwed up already. The regular season hasn't even started yet and I screwed up. You've had your draft? Yes, and I already screwed up because I forgot that I had my draft. <laughs> so did it auto-draft for you? Oh, yeah. So it auto-drafted. You probably didn't You're probably going to win now because of well, it. Here's what's, well, I kind of did because I've all, I play with a group from guys from high school. And, we, you know, they, they pick, like, it was supposed to be Sunday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. And so I'm like, okay, sure, that's fine, whatever. Because there's guys all the way from Seattle to over here on the East Coast. So we, it's hard to make it work for everybody. Fine, whatever. And I put it in my calendar and I put it in my phone. And every year I've always made it. Last year I came close. My girlfriend was like, you're going to miss your fantasy football draft. I'm like, oh, crap, you're absolutely right. So I pull up, thank God, I remember my password. And I get up there and I'm ready to roll. And every year I come close to winning. Like, I think the best I finished is third. And this is in a 12-league team. Again, nobody cares. But the point being... I, I'm usually like, yeah, I'm going to draft the players. I do some research. I follow sports close enough that I take some pride in doing this. Uh, nope. My phone died Friday or er, Saturday, Sunday night, and we watched the first show of Tom Clancy's. Um, mm. Oh, Jack, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Thank you. So good. I good, watched right? all of it. On, so it good. On, I'm trying. I have some emotions about it. But anyway, <laughs> I was busy doing that. Phone's in the other room. It, re it charges back up. I go back in. It's now like 1130, and I have a missed text message from our commissioner that said, are you going to be able to join us live? And I was like, oh bleep. I literally <laughs> said, oh bleep, oh bleep. I forgot my fantasy football draft was tonight. So for the first time ever, I had zero say in my team. And it'll probably, like you said, be the year that I win. So what position or, or what draft position did you have? Uh, third, because I finished third. Hmm. So I actually had a really good position. And then it snakes back down and through, but I was, I was gonna get to pick third. Um, Hold so, on, if you win your league, you get first pick as well? Uh, that's the way they sit it. Sit, yeah, I think that's huh. the way they did it this year. That's the way they did You know, we every single year they change it up. I don't, the commissioner always makes the rules. Your punishments and... He, well, no, we just like, it's 50 bucks to play and whoever wins gets their money. Or the third place person gets their money back. The second place person gets a portion in the first mm -hmm. place, whatever. And so this year for setting the schedule or setting the draft or setting the draft order, the commissioner was like, all right, I've looked different places. There's no really super fair way to do it, so we're just going to do it based on how everybody finished last year. And I was like, oh, cool, because I finished third and maybe, yeah. Anyway. It should be based off of who gets their money in the fastest. 
Also true. As a commissioner. <laughs> also true. And it's and a bunch it of dudes, and yeah, they're like, people forever. That's how I do You can it. send me a check. I'm like, no, I'm not going to send you a check. Get PayPal or Venmo, because I'm not <laughs> going to write a check and go find a stamp and find a place to mail it. So. Now, see, I'm anti anything but cash as far as oh, fantasy dudes. Really? Do not Venmo. Do not Wait. cash app. No, what this is this is gambling. This is cash play? transaction based. <laughs> what happens if you don't play with somebody? Um, by you. Yeah. You better mail it in an envelope. Mail no cash. way! <laughs> what year is this? What? What's the matter There's with you? A, y'all are, it's a gambling. It's, you don't leave a paper trail. Venmo and Cash App are pretty legit. I mean, I mean, I listen, it's, it's very easy, anytime. but if you're gambling, I, I, I put that rule in my league this year. I said, no. No Venmo, no Cash App. You pay in cash, straight up, and we all collect it on draft day, and that's it. So my, my my biggest snafu of my team, I won't go through my entire team. Thank you. Because nobody cares. <laughs> I kind of care. But but my <laughs> seven, well, who was your first pick? I do want to know that. Okay, yeah. So the first round pick, or the first pick, was David Johnson, running back out of, out okay, of okay, Arizona. Okay, good one. Which is good. Yeah. Right, so I scrolled down. I'm like, okay, he's de- I did get Josh Gordon out of Cleveland, which I'm a little bit like, uh, is he actually, I mean, there he's... Who knows if he's actually going to be on fire the entire year? And <laughs> I kind of hope that's the case because it'll give me a reason to pull for Cleveland even more past. You know, I think the bigger question is who's going to play quarterback. That's right? a great but question, Lauren continue. Brooks, and that's where. Oh well, there. But uh, I thought you were going to say who's going to play quarterback from your fantasy no, football no, team. And so I'm about to tell you. But yeah. In the seventh round, I took Carson Wentz, who's not uh-huh. going to start on Thursday. So I already week one out the gate. I'm going to have to do some. Yeah, but he's a good quarterback to have. Hopefully, I mean, he was on track to be the MVP apart. last year. The main thing is you just have to make sure that you have a quarterback who you can play in week one. That's exactly right. Draft Blake. So, so, so a quarterback. I I honestly thought the because I'm critical of Blake obviously already, and I thought the irony was going to be if I scroll down <laughs> Blake Bortles. I thought that's what you were going to tell <laughs> us. That's smart, isn't it? So anyway, there's my uh, the Jaguars offensive of coordinator. No, I know. Okay, we'll Nathaniel Hagen, next. who I am a huge fan of, and thank you for listening to the show. I'm also a big fan of Blake Bortles. Um, do you guys play fantasy football? Yeah, oh, I, I, I've played for more than a decade. That's cool. And you, Lauren Brooke? Oh yeah. And you? Play I haven't football? recently. Yeah. Do you guys like it? Mm-hmm. No. I'm growing a little tired of it, to be honest. It seems like a kind of like a chore, doesn't it? I love draft day. It's the managing of it for sort of minimal money at the at the end is what gets me nowadays. But I, I love draft day. I love being able to get together because I have a girls only league, I have a family league, and then uh, I, I'm in the Lexitary league. And so with all of those, they have different pros and cons. But as like anybody sends me an invite for a new league, it's immediate no. Yeah, immediate. I love it, but I'm also not the commissioner of any of the leagues, so I can just sit back, draft, and then watch and enjoy. And I think it's. It, it's good for especially what we do to pay attention to stars who we wouldn't otherwise. No, know you're exactly about. right. No, it does help with the job. It helps with um, with staying plugged in with teams outside of the one that we cover. And so mm-hmm. for that, yeah, I'm I'm good with that as well. Um, all right, how much time do we have? Because this is a you're good. We've got plenty. Okay, cool. So. Have, have you guys seen this story that Sarah Spain did for ES, E6? I know. I saw the word count on this. I saw the author, and then I saw the word count. I was like, no, no. <laughs> I'm not reading you're not this. A big, you're not a big fan. I know. JJ, how about you? Do I like Sarah Spain? No, 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 no. Right. Okay. So you don't even, aren't going to bother with her work. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I know. It's really. like a 5,000 word article. I was like, nah. <laughs> I don't need to hear 5,000 words from her. Okay. Well, <laughs> now that you all have give me the TLDR all over my uh, <laughs> segment here, I read all that. that. Thank that you, Lauren. Awesome. Thank you. That's why we're on the same side of the table here. Okay. So I'm going to give you kind of the bullet points of this really quickly. Delan McCullough is the running back, uh, running back coach at uh, at Kansas City with the Chiefs. He grew up in an adopted family. He was adopted at six weeks old. His birth, or maybe even earlier than that, his birth mother uh, was a high school student never told the birth father that she was even pregnant. She was like, he had a scholarship, and I didn't, it was a fling, Mm -hmm. and I just didn't want to go there. So she also decides that this child would be better off living with a family that had two parents and that were adults, and she made the decision to place him up for adoption. The family that adopted him, uh, the the husband and wife kind of had some issues, and the husband ended up leaving, and... Essentially, he was ironically ended up being raised by a single mother. So he spends most of his life kind of yearning for a father figure like a lot of young men do. So he plays high school football. He's kind of a a star already and, and he's starting to get some attention. And he 
gets recruited by Miami of Ohio University. And again, all the while, he's not really interested in finding his birth parents because he's like 18 years old. And he, he did struggle with not having that father figure. I mean, that, that's something that a lot of people go through. So he worked through that and he just tried to kind of, um, kind of ignore that. And then he started to get offers coming in. And then a coach from Miami of Ohio introduced himself and was like, hey, you should come play for us. And it was one of the main reasons that he went there. And um, his time went on, he became really close to this man. And he kind of saw a mentor in him. And people would joke that like, you guys look like you come from the same cloth. And, and then he went on to uh, coach somewhere else. And Deland, they always stayed in touch, right? All throughout his NFL, NFL career and all these things. And then one day he decided, you know, I've had my own kids and my my wife, when they go to do, hey, tell us your family history right. and things like that, his wife could always say, well, here's my, and, and he, the land couldn't say anything. Hmm. Um, he was like, I don't, I don't really even know where I come from. So he decided to do some digging and he found his birth mother, and I'm leaving out some things to get to the point, but he found his birth mother on, um, on uh, Facebook. I don't remember, I can't remember the specifics of, but basically he reached out and said, I think it might be my mom or something like that. Well, the laws changed, which allowed... That's right, that's right. And they actually got to, he got to see yeah. the act, and, her, and the whole time, the birth father, again, was not included at all, so his name wasn't even on the birth certificate. Oh, well. So he finds his mom's name, he sends her a message on Facebook, they reconnect, he's having this conversation. Turns out she was always just down the road to begin with, so hmm. that was interesting, right? And he's like, okay, I need to know who's my dad. And she stops for a minute and she, like, I guess hesitates. and was like, well, I never told him. And, the, you know, it, doesn't, it wasn't that he didn't want to be in your life. I just never gave him the option. Um, your dad is Sherman Smith, who was the coach from Miami of wow. Ohio, who came and essentially mentored him for the good part. Of, was the father figure, Since while at the same time, was his actual biological father didn't what? know it. Crazy, right? Small now you don't hate Sarah world. Spain, do you? <laughs> no, she still sucks. <laughs> but it's a great story. story. So he hits him up and, and calls him and is like, hey, I got some good news. Because, again, he's still in contact with, with Sherman. He's like, hey, I found my mom. And he's like, that's great. I'm so happy for you. And he's like, I also found out who my dad was. And he's like, who is it? And that's awesome. He's like, it's you. And he was like, I mean, blindsided, right? Well, yeah. Forty-something years later, 30-something years later, and they had all this time together. And it was really interesting because... People would say, man, you guys look so much alike. Hmm. People would joke in the football program, like, you guys look like your father and son, and you act the same, and you talk the same, and you walk the And they just kind of always blew it off, and when in reality, that hmm. was just... That's cool. Small that freaking cool? world. My favorite part was when Sherman, the coach, uh, lived by this quote and always preached this quote to everybody. Being irresponsible is not neutral. When you're irresponsible, someone becomes responsible for what you've been irresponsible for. That's a good one. So he, this whole time, believes in this, and then all of a sudden, you know, his eyes are open to he has been not irresponsible, right. but has not been in this kid's life. And but I he's felt been guilty about it. And, and, he, and he's like, I yeah. didn't know. I didn't know that he was even around. And yeah, ninety-nine point nine percent chance. Yeah, they took a DNA that. test. They did well, everything, and it's crazy, right? Yeah, I, I think like it's a. It's I like think that. it's a fantastic story. It's an amazing story because it. I think a lot of times people think adoption is, is just this easy process. Right. And, and here it, it kind of goes to show the birth mother thought that her son was being given to a doctor and his wife. That's right. And in reality it wasn't that way. And then, right, the, the family split up and, and he went through some, some men in his life that weren't great mentors and were kind of abusive to his mom. And then in the end, you know, it all comes for full circle and he did have this great mm -hmm. role model. But it, I think it just it shows the wealth of love that can come from different sources and it doesn't always have to be parents it's great when that's the case but there can be other people right. and you don't even know how much of an influence you may be on someone's life uh, it, even though most of the time it's probably not going to turn out to be your child you still can have an influence on someone's life what's sarah spain's connection to the story her friend skip i don't know who Skip is, but somebody asked her, how did you find this story, was college roommates with Delane. Hmm. Okay. And alerted her and said, you're not going to believe what happened. Because this is not her. up her alley. Yeah, she, I didn't know she was all. a, a like, long-form writer. Yeah, like no, this. she, yeah, so um, 
and it was a, it was like an under like they kept this the they call this the best kept secret in, in a right. right now because they did all this work without people finding out that like dude his dad was his father figure the whole time it's just crazy right. so that is but well, you know what crazy again stories. coaches can certainly be really instrumental in people's lives and we are going to catch up with a coach next Jaguars offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett joins us in just a few minutes so keep it right here on Helmets and Heels built by Dream Fenner's Homes on 1010XL. Catch Navy football on 1010XL. Ready. take on Memphis Saturday at 3 30 brought to you by Rubble's Express Car Wash at the Town Center and do-it-yourself rentals and sales. Hear the games all season long on 1010XL. When it comes to finding a roofer, three things are vitally important. Honest assessment, no money required up front, and the best warranty possible. Lauren Brooks here, and that's exactly what you'll find with all pro roofing and consulting who have over 25 years of experience. If your roof is in need of repair or if you need a new roof, now's the time now that hurricane season is upon us. All Pro offers industry leading warranties because they're both state certified and certified by the manufacturers. All Pro Roofing and Consulting is a family owned company, part of the Lloyds family of businesses, and you can find them online at allproroofingllc.com. Thank you, we're done. Thank you. <laughs> when one of our, our commenters said that he was going to call up the station and ask something really dumb now. <laughs> That's funny. JJ's heard it all. It's the dumbest question you've ever been asked. Oh, that's impossible to know. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> name I the day. Forget to tell. <laughs> Are you ready for your first hurricane season? Me? Yes. Michael. Sure. <laughs> when does it we start? We have three out there. Already right? June. June oh, first. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I think it June thirty. Right? Yeah. And it rolls through. November. But it's usually like right around now. Yeah, for us it is. So do you just wait for like a tropical storm that's well, like they're like tropical oh, storms it's three nothing. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn into a hurricane. Right. There's three out See, there right now. But I you got Direct TV? No. No. I have Uverse and TV. I would. The only way I would get worried is if it's a Cat Three or more. Yeah, we're fine. Anything but else? You throw a party. Oh. <laughs> She's gonna. <laughs> you're gonna be fine. Okay. Are you They'll make a big deal about on the news. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. I didn't even lose power last year, and we had like it depends because some people. And it's the wind flooded. that knocks out obviously all what well, knocks out all the yeah. power and then falling trees. trees. Yeah, falling yeah. trees. Houses and power lines. Okay, so that's what so sucks. Like if you live the flooding. Trees, you could be yeah, with all the rain, like Hurricane Harvey, the reason yeah. it's so bad in Houston is right, that hurricane yeah, never moved. And Houston is like one big floodplain to begin with. Yeah, yeah. it was like built really weird. Yes, it was. I uh, see tornadoes. I mean, right. it's it's a thing where... Those are serious. And it's, like, there's no time. It's right. like, well, you got five minutes. And then you sit there and you go, how close is it? Because I have to, like, wake my kids up. And I don't really want to wake my kids up because they've been asleep. And I'm in the middle of this show. So can we just, like, wing it and really see if it's going to be that bad? And that's what we would do. And, like, idiots in Oklahoma, we'd all go outside and look up at the sky. And, we'd, and they, they had, like, this super tracker tornado thing where they can like down to a science tell you what cross streaks is about mm -hmm. to hammer. Wow. But Tulsa's just not, I mean there was one that hit, I say that, there was one that hit a couple of years ago last year and did a little bit of damage to some buildings and tore up a Starbucks which it was like weird because it hit like right off the interstate and it hit a few things but for the most part Tulsa doesn't get uh, tornadoes. Like mm -hmm. it usually passes. Now Oklahoma City, a town called Moore got hammered like Two or three straight years and leveled the place. There was, wow. there were kids like hit a school. There were a bunch of kids in the school. It was Damn. terrible. Yes, I was when Kevin Durant was still with the Thunder and he gave like a million oh, dollars yeah, to yeah, help yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, out of all the natural disasters, give me hurricanes over any of them because you, know you know what's coming. You know what they have? Yeah, it's exactly right. You know what they have in um, Oklahoma as well, or Tulsa too, in particular? Earthquakes. We have earthquakes. Like, Random. do you guys remember, you probably don't remember this, but Kansas State came to play Oklahoma State in Stillwater, and Kirk Curb, Kirk Street was on the call for it. And after the game, they're doing a live shoot, you know, Kirk, tell us about what happened in the game. And a, and a earthquake hit, and we felt like Tulsa and Stillwater are like an hour right, apart. And the, uh, and the counter, uh, like, it's, it's really weird. It sounds like thunder. And then, like, the, the uh, hmm. Cabinets start shattering. Or you don't feel the ground like shaking? Yes. And 
and you look up and Herb Street can feel it in Stillwater because it's a live shot and his eyes, if you Google Herb, uh, Herb Street and earthquake, his eyes get this big and he's like, <gasps> and they have to make all these memes about him. Yes, because an earthquake hit. That's crazy. In between Stillwater and Tulsa. Yeah, Someone knew there was that? <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. yeah, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, it's no, creepy. It's super creepy. Yeah, but, but it was before I worked. Those are here. creepy, yeah. scary eyes. Right? He's like, <laughs> oh my god. You just saw a ghost. Thank you, JJ. <laughs> yeah. I see him on the line. <clears throat> oh, he hasn't called yet, has he? No, he hasn't. Oh, he's got him already. Yeah. I say he's right there, like he's sitting right there. Which way are we going? I got the Star Wars question if none of y'all want it. Okay. <laughs> I, I got it handled. <laughs> I'm going to ask him about that call. <laughs> you really wish you hadn't recommended me. Be honest. Helmets and Heels, built by Dreamfinders Homes. Presented by Underwood Jewelers and American Window Products. On 1010XL, 92.5 FM. It is game week, finally, as the Jaguars take on the Giants on Sunday at 1 o'clock. But before we get to that, first let's talk a little Jaguars offense with offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett. Coach, thanks so much for joining us tonight. How y'all doing? It's my pleasure. We are fantastic, thanks, now that football season is finally here, and I'm sure you are ready to get it started as well. So let's get it started with a little quarterback conversation. How have you seen Blake Bortles grow from the time you took over as offensive coordinator to now? Oof, I'll tell you, I, I still remember about four years ago, three years ago, whenever it was I first came in here. and I remember sitting in there seeing this, you know, a little kind of chunky guy that didn't know too much about, about football. And, now you fast forward three years later after all the hits, all the crazy, all the bad, a little bit of good, all of a sudden you see a guy that is matured and a guy that is, uh, just understands how to uh, prepare himself day in and day out and, and really try to figure out how to attack guys here and there. And, and I think that's been one of the best things about, about being with him and just kind of growing with him over these years is watching him really start to play the game of football and, and actually learn how to how to get the ball down the field at the right time and, and find a completion and do the right things. Sometimes, as we all love, sometimes take off and use his feet. Coach, I'm going to piggyback off that. So many times in the NFL, and we see it in college as well, it's almost impossible for a quarterback to be successful if his offensive coordinator or his quarterback's coach changes. Obviously, you guys have been together now, what, going into your third or fourth season together. Kind of talk a little bit about what it's like to establish that relationship and how that can help him be more successful. Yeah, you know, there's so much trust that goes into this game. Uh, I mean, when you have to choreograph 11 guys and that those 11 guys are continually changing, whether it's from injuries or just even personnel changes, different guys going out there. You know, as a quarterback, you're kind of that, that lone wolf out there at times. And there's just so many different changes. And, and you always want somebody that you can lean on, you can trust. You know, you could talk about the good times, the bad times. They always have somebody that kind of that never lets you get too low, never lets you get too high. And, and I think that just at, over time, you know, Blake and I, we just – the relationship that we've built, you know, he, he knows that I've got his back. And he knows I'm there to, to protect him when it comes to the play calls, protect him uh, when it comes to taking shots and, and all across the board there. So, so it's never – you always want when that play comes in to feel really confident about it. The worst thing is when a play is called and – you weren't expecting it or it just kind of comes out of nowhere and I mean just imagine what a quarterback would feel like out there when all of a sudden some random play comes in I mean even before he's looked at the huddle you know he's going oh gosh this thing sucks this isn't going to work so I think it's it, it's when you get that trust and, and he knows what's going to come from me it's like he's almost an extension of me after all this time and, and so we just work so well together and we understand our adjustments we understand what we want to attack with and I just think that trust just takes a huge weight off because if you if you don't know what's happening and it from the coordinator and what the coordinator is going to do and the play calls are going to be, you can understand how lonely that could be when 80,000 people are staring at you and the players are looking at you and everybody's looking at you to, to do something good and you're sitting there not even knowing what, what's going to happen. So I, I just think that relationship and that trust factor that we have for each other allows him to go out there and play and know that I've got his back no matter what happens. Coach, last season the, the, the Jags sort of came out of nowhere and were consistently seen as underdogs throughout the season. How are you guys preparing for this upcoming season knowing that other teams are going to be coming after you? Uh, 
you know, we always looked at it as, I think every game you go in and, and you know everybody, last year was a little different because everybody kind of looked at uh, looked at us as the lame duck. So they mm-hmm. just thought they could beat up on us uh, and they thought they could just come after us. So it was about building our confidence enough to say, hey, we're, we're not going to sit around and let anybody beat up on us. Well, you know, we're going to attack them. I mean, we're going to try to run the ball at them. We're going to throw the ball down the field. So I think that kind of change in culture and that change in mindset, it's just kind of my personality to always want to get after people and play tough and, and run the ball and all that good stuff. So I think that we kind of built that into those guys. So now, whether people think they can run over us, people think that they want to come after us, I think that, you know, the guys' confidence across the board, you know, just the whole offense, I think that they feel like, you know, they've accomplished so much. It's, it's Everybody's going to look at us a little different. And we just have to do what we do. We know that we're the ones that can take us over the top. It's not going to be anybody else. Jaguars offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett joining us here on Helmets and Heels. Coach, I just want to know about when you're prepping for a game, so this is game week, how often are you in the film room collectively as an offense? Ooh, uh, I would say on – so it's a, it starts a little bit earlier now because we have a little extra time. So I would mm-hmm. say, you know, we go about, I'd say, about two hours – a day we get to really get in there and you know I present in front of the guys the game plan I kind of look at it as though hey these are the plays I always treat it kind of as an audition for these guys I kind of I put these plays up there and try to sell them on them and say hey these are going to be good these are going to you guys are going to love these ones and they get to kind of look at those and they look at the tape with us and they decide what you know everybody kind of works together to see which ones we like then we go out on the practice field work that out and, and and it's almost like an audition for each play so as we present them then they audition for them and then we watch them again uh, after practice so we get probably about i'd say on, on a typical wednesday we'll probably get about three hours kind of all together as a group and then as the week goes on i would say you know thursday it's, it's a little less because we have less situations so the coaches get a little bit more individual time to cover their individual because especially in offense it's so individualized at times because an offensive lineman has to look at things completely different than a wide receiver. Quarterback has to look at it completely different than probably a tight end. So it, we have to get them their individual time also. But we try to get together at least about uh, between, I would say it would range about three hours to an hour a day um, up until uh, game day. Coach, two guys I'm really excited about on the offense, Austin Safarian Jenkins, the tight end, and wide receiver Dante Moncrief. What are your expectations for those guys? You know, th- those are two new guys that I, it, it's exciting. Yeah, I, it's exciting because this is going to be the first true game that I that I'll be calling with them out on the field. So you're excited to see. Obviously, expectations are always high for everybody across the board. We always want to expect the best from from everybody, but you never know until, as we say, until those live bullets are flying and and the people are in the stands and it's real. You know that that's when that's when you really get to find out about people. They get to find out about me, how I am on a game day. So I think that it's very exciting. I mean, obviously, we, we, we want the best from them. We want them to be able to execute the plays and, and make plays when their opportunity comes. But uh, it, it's it's going to be fun to see. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's going to be a, a lot of good production from both of those guys. The first test will come this Sunday up in New York. James Betcher is the new defensive coordinator for the Giants. What do they... Oh, what challenges do they present as you take your offense up there? <laughs> I'll tell you, they, they they give you all kinds of good stuff. Uh, he is a uh, he's one of the, the very few guys now across the league that uh, he enjoys to bring pressure. And uh, what that means is he's going to bring you know at least five guys. Uh, I mean, at least seventy five percent of the time. I mean, they're going to bring people from all over the place. So. For us, our guys, they're going to have to really do a great job communicating. And, and on week one, uh, you know, at the Giants, it's going to be loud. So a big test for us is going to have to be just communicating and, and understanding all those different pressures that can show up. And, you know, I mean, they, they really they bring it from all over the place. So if our, the one thing I've noticed, and, and after last year, when our guys know what's happening and, and they get a good feel for where those things are happening, they can really execute well. And I think that's going to be a big challenge for us because those are the things that he's going to present. Is, is you never know. There's going to be pressure, and, and somebody's going to be coming at you uh, from some angle. Speaking of last year, how did you mentally, you yourself mentally prepare to face off against one of the, the NFL's best coaches of all time in, in Bill Belichick? Did you did, did, did you sleep the night before? Because I, I know as a fan I didn't. You know, I, I still remember the first game I ever called in the NFL. Uh, I was at the Buffalo Bills. My, my very first game, it was at home with the Bills, and we 
we went against Coach Belichick there too. And at that time, uh, we were starting a, a brand new rookie uh, quarterback in EJ Manuel. We had a, a rookie wide receiver in Robert Woods, a rookie wide receiver in uh, Marquise Goodwin. We had a bunch of young guys out there, and I remember that night I definitely didn't sleep very well. When you have a lot of young guys that you're going out there, and it's your first game in the NFL, but. I think now, getting to the point, even during the playoffs and all those times, I think you work so hard during the week. You know, as a coach, you know, you work so hard to prepare and make sure you get the guys in the best positions. You do everything you can to prepare. So, you know, I've gotten to the point now that, you know, a lot of my work is done on, on really Thursday night all the way to Friday. And, and, and it's about just knowing I've done everything I can to help the players understand what we want to accomplish. Because once you get to game day, you know, there's so many things that happen. There's so many things that can change. There's, you know, from injuries to different changes of the defense. So I think you just, it's about your preparation. You know, if, if you feel like you prepared as much as you possibly can, then you're, you really just, you just kind of go about your business and, and, and you get everything, get everything ready. So you know that especially a guy like Coach Bilicek is always going to have a wrinkle here and there. And, uh, you know, you just, it's about preparation. And I think, you know, we always feel good going into every game. And I feel like I, I can, get those guys to understand what we want to accomplish. Coach, what's the most important thing you learned as a coach from your father, who also coached in college and the NFL? Whew. I learned stuff from him every second. He calls me all the time and tells me all the things that we do wrong, or uh, a lot of times <laughs> he'll say a lot of the good stuff, but uh, I would say probably one of the best assets in my life right now, uh, without a doubt, is my father. Um, he writes reports for me every week. Um, every single thing he can do to help, and it's great because, you know, I learned so much from him on how to teach the quarterback, how to make the quarterback efficient. Um, so, I, I mean, I would say that probably the number one thing he's always preached to me is change is the norm. You, you have to embrace it, and, and I think that's something that when you know something's going to change and you know there's going to be all kinds of dynamic things that are going to happen, whether, you know, there are injuries or whether there is something that mixes up or defense, you, you just have to embrace it and, and not be intimidated by it and, and be expect it and love it. I think that was one of the, probably one of the best advice he ever gave me. So it never really intimidated you when all of a sudden something, something would start changing. Did you get your dancing skills from here as well? <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh, we hear you're quite the break dancer. Is that true? Where, where, where'd y'all hear that? <laughs> we can't reveal our sources, coach. Then we wouldn't wow, have jobs. That, so. that, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Uh, okay. I just want you to know, I might be blushing a little bit. Um, <laughs> But uh, that would probably, I would say that would come from my mom. My dad definitely loved, loved music, but uh, definitely I would say that Five minutes. Came, it came from my mother. And uh, I'm excited I pass it on to, to my kids. And uh, all my all my kids are in dance. And I, that's the one thing that, that dad makes them do is they got to be sure they do some kind of dancing. That's awesome. Do you ever dance in the locker room? <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't done that. I, I, I always tell the guys when they find out about it, I tell them, hey, I'm retired. Been a long time. I I, I I don't don't do that as much as I used to back in the day. Well, well we're <laughs> oh, keeping man. it keeping it a little more on the on the lighter side. Star Wars. I have two questions. I hear you're mm. you're you're a big fan of Star Wars. Which character is your favorite, and how do you feel about the Last Jedi? Oh, the Last Jedi. Oh my gosh. To, to, to try to decide on one guy that that or one person out of all the Star Wars is just unbelievably difficult because there's so many amazing characters, especially if you're a true Star Wars fan. Um, if you had to pin me down, I mean, I think Han Solo was just there one you of the go. coolest dudes growing up as a kid. Uh, I've been him for Halloween numerous times. Me too! Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but I would say Han Solo for sure. And You know, The Last Jedi, I, I mean, uh, this is the way I look at it. Uh, every, every Star Wars movie, I love. I, I'm excited for I love Solo. I love them all just because it's about the story, you know, I mean, it's just about it's such an unbelievable uh, just saga of all these stories. And it's a billion dollar corporation. And I mean, just all the things they've done is just, just absolutely amazing. Last Jedi, I mean, it, you know, just watching Luke Skywalker come back onto the screen. I mean, I don't care who you are. That, that's, that, that's awesome. And especially how the ending was. I mean, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I mean, I enjoy all of them. Rogue One's probably my favorite movie of all time, but you know, it's, it's hard to say I can't can't sit down and watch them all in order at any point in time uh, during the day or year or month, any time. Like, I can sit down and watch all those things. Really? Rogue One is your favorite out of all the Star Wars movies? <sighs> I'll tell you, that one there, I, I mean, because you got to go back to the original first Star Wars you saw when they were talking about all the people that the True. Death Star plans, you always wonder where the Death Star plans came from, and then just, I, I don't know, it was just, I thought it was awesome. In the Vader scenes. again. 
Oh, the Vader scene. I mean, just the whole thing, just bringing it back to telling, finishing, kind of starting that story over uh, was so huge. Because as a kid, you always wondered, well, how the heck did they get those plans? You know, it's like the whole thing starts with that. And, and I, I just thought it was, I thought it was a really well done movie. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, Coach. Well, good luck on Sunday. We will certainly be rooting on the hometown team. And thanks so much for joining us and for always listening to us. We really appreciate it. Heck yeah, appreciate you guys. Keep it rolling. Let's go get some wins. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 13, to be precise. All right, that is offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett for the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the New York Giants this Sunday. Any surprises from anything he had to say? I think the most surprise was for you, Blythe, on the Star Wars. The Rogue One <laughs> being his favorite. I love Rogue One. Um, I thought Last Jedi w- was was terrible. It's one of the worst Star Wars movies. But uh, I still watch it, and I, I still will re-watch it. But Rogue One, I really, really enjoyed. I love that his dad gives him game plans yes, and comments. Yes, gives yeah. him reports. Like, yeah, that was awesome I like question. that. <laughs> so I was covering the team when Nathaniel Hackett was promoted from quarterback's coach to offensive coordinator and his very first press conference he is still to this day just as animated as he was that day you can hear it in every question like or every no. answer oh that's a good question and he's that energetic <laughs> that's every what's single surprising. time i've never talked to him or heard from him and i'm he is extremely personable and a pleasure to have on the air you never know what you're going to get with some of these coaches mm-hmm. yeah, they either feel great. like they that was are cool. obligated and they have to give you these standard answers he was awesome he's welcome back and Regular yeah. appearances. Let's That's make right. it happen. Absolutely. All right. Thanks to Ashlyn Sullivan from Jaguars.com for joining us as always. And, of course, Jaguars offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett, who just joined us. And I'm sure that will be up on On Demand if you missed it. For Blythe Brumley, Donna Murphy, and Lauren Rue, I'm Lauren Brooks. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night. But don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for XL Primetime with Hacker and Joe C. And thanks, of course, to our producer, JJ Selva, And hope you won tonight's Peter Brook Chocolate Heel. Thanks, guys. Big week this week. Go Jags.